Hey guys, this is Matt here. I wanted to do a quick video to help walk you through the way that I uh, prepare for wheeling trips, camping trips, or uh, a lot of times just basic general uh, preparation for just being in a vehicle in general. And hopefully this uh, will help you pack for your upcoming trip. Um, I'm not going to cover anything about vehicle specific stuff. So uh, types of tools to carry with you, um, the vehicle specific needs for fluids and, and things of that nature, but I'll get into kind of some recovery gear, uh, first aid, and just kind of what I consider to be the essentials to, to bring with you on pretty much any length of trip. Um, I'll start over here with, uh, something that I think is really important for, uh, trail communications is having good, reliable radios. So I tend to carry three or four different types. So on the far left there, that's a GMRS. Uh, in the middle, the orange ones are uh, just FRS. The one on the right is a ham. And then there's also a CB in the truck. Um, having a, a wider uh, a array of comms to choose from uh, and kind of ensures you have compatibility with everyone you meet with on the trail. Uh, and keeping in contact on the trail is super important. So it's kind of nice to have your bases covered. Uh, something to keep in mind, though, the GMRS... Oh, sorry. This is on a chest mount. It's kind of weird, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Uh, the left radio that's black, the GMRS, requires a, a license. It costs, I think, 70 bucks. There's no exam or anything like that, but you have to pay a licensing fee that's good for, you know, 10 years. Whereas the ham over here, uh, you have to pay the testing fees, which I can't remember what they are anymore. Uh, your license is good for, I want to say, seven years. Um, but there is a, an exam involved uh, because it's a lot more kind of high-powered, high-tech radio that can affect communications in, in many different ways and, uh, you know, mess up the, the frequencies and the the bandwidth of other, you know, users on it. Uh, and then the, I also have a, a spare ham. The the nice one, the Yesu, sits in this pocket. And then this little guy, the Beofang, is like, I don't know, 30 bucks on Amazon. But anyways, uh, this is a nice little kit from Blue Ridge Overland Gear. This is uh, covered in this molly pouching, and it just kind of hangs on the back of the passenger seat of, of your car. So you can have everything ready to go and you just kind of throw it in the truck, click it in and, and you're good to take off. Uh, it also has this nice pouch that I've added that has a bunch of charging equipment, um, extra battery packs. Uh, this is uh, something to uh, repair a winch line in the field. So if you have a synthetic line and uh, you, your rope gets cut for whatever reason or whatever, you can actually bury the, the line back into itself. That's called a FID. And this is a nice one that I keep in here. Um, so yeah, this is nice to have this extra space. I have extra whistles. I think whistles are a good thing to have on the, the, the trail, especially if, you know, something really weird happens and you need to leave the vehicle or whatever. It's good to have that. Um, but yeah, this is a nice setup with the molly webbing. You can have whatever attachments you want. And uh, it's really nice because you get to keep everything that you use the most often within an arm's reach of where you sit. Uh, moving on over here, um, I apologize, this uh, looks so shiny. I haven't been able to use this specific gear yet. Uh, normally when I sell vehicles, sometimes I throw in things like high lifts and max tracks and stuff. And so all this is, is brand new to me. Um, over here on the left is a really nice shovel called the Crazy Beaver. It's a great name, it's spelled with a K, of course. Um, it's really good for uh, kind of breaking roots and, or, you know, really digging um, in, in hard pack uh, soil environments and stuff when you either you get stuck or uh, you need to clear, clear the trail because, uh, you know, trees have fallen or whatever. It's a really, really nice uh, shovel. It comes with this, uh, I think I paid extra for this uh, little cover to make sure that you don't get cut if it's, you know, sliding around or whatever. This, of course, is the venerable high lift. This is the extreme version, so coating's a little nicer on it, um, a little bit nicer materials, and uh, and it has this upper like jaw, which is pretty cool because you can use it for a bunch of different uh, accessories that come or that don't come with high lift, but you can purchase for the high lift. I have a couple of those. One is a handle keeper, which uh, if you've ever heard one of these kind of rattle around, it's can get really obnoxious because these things just hit each other as you drive down the trail. So this kind of slides on top and then you line it up with your pole and it doesn't make any noise. And then of course, this uh, tiny little base can be really dangerous and very unsteady and kind of off camber situation. So this is uh, like an aftermarket, like basically, um, what do you call it? It's like a footing, like a little platform where you can just 
lift the jack into this place and it's far more secure and stable, especially if you're in mud or sand or whatever and the, the jack wants to sink on you. So those are super, super cool. Uh, next of all, this is some stuff that I think everyone should have with them 24-7, kind of no matter what they're doing. On the right is a really nice first aid kit that's super complete from Outer Limit Supply. Uh, cool owner, Travis Hurley here in, in Denver. He's a firefighter EMT and, and does this as well on the side. It's a really, really nice kit and kind of has everything you need. And then I also got the extra... Um, Clean control kits with extra dressings and a tourniquet uh, because oftentimes if you're in the backcountry and you know you're working on a truck and it falls on you and you're alone for a while this would potentially be a lifesaver so it's good to have extra uh, equipment and of course right behind it is a couple a couple fire extinguishers they keep in the truck one is uh, kind of this cool uh, it's a new new kind of concept on the market it's called the element e50 uh, it uses like a striker um, to put off like a gas that essentially attacks the fire. It's non-toxic. Um, it's really, really small. This will put out uh, the gas for 50 seconds. It's the bigger model. And this is how small it is. It's, it's really tiny and really cool. So I've never had to use one of these, but I've watched a bunch of cool videos where people do some impressive things with them. So I keep one of these in every car now. And then I also keep one or two of these around to keep one of these in the van and one on the, the land cruiser but it's just a nice um i can't remember if this is the halgard one or not but one of the ones i have is the halgard which means it's not going to do any damage oh yeah it's this one it's not going to do any damage to the interior of your car if you have a fire in the dashboard or something like that and you have to spray it so i really like h3r i really like element a lot they're a little expensive but you know they're going to work and I think that that's worth its uh, its price premium. Then over here, just a couple random things. This is just like a little construction vest from Ikea in case you get a flat on the side of the road and it's really dark. I think it's a really good idea to have something like that to kind of help light you up. And then to help with that also, we have emergency flares. These are the old uh, flaming ones that you kind of light up. Uh, I also have some battery operated ones that work really well too. And you can never have too many things like that in, in the car. Um, when on the trail in particular, as soon as I get out of the vehicle, I always put on gloves. Because generally, if you're getting out of the vehicle, you're trying to move rocks out of the way or you know pick something up off the ground, you should always protect your hands. So I keep a pair of gloves in every door pocket in the car and also safety glasses because stuff is normally flying up when people are stuck or they're trying to get out of a spot. There's going to be rocks flying. There's going to be stuff in the air that you just don't want in your eyes. So uh, I also try to keep a set of eyeglasses in each door pocket so that anyone getting out of the car, they put the gloves on, put the glasses on, and I know they're going to be safe. Um, over here is a emergency valve stem replacement. So a lot of times these, these wheels these days, the valve stems are the most vulnerable part of the whole wheel. You knock a valve stem off on, on a rock and you're you're pretty much screwed unless you have an extra set of valve stems. So this is a nice one because it's super, super easy to, uh, to screw in and field repair by yourself. No special tools or anything like that. I uh, definitely watch a YouTube video or two before buying one and you'll be convinced. And then if you like the old school way, of course we have our air deflators. These, uh, screw onto each tire to deflate the air pressure in the tires to give you more comfortable ride and better traction. And this is better for the environment, it's better for everyone. Um, inside here is the ARB patch kit, and uh, this thing works really well. It's a really simple, kind of old school design, but it has a ton of plugs. In fact, we've used, I don't know, maybe 12 or 15 of these, helping a kid in an ATV once on a red cone. <laughs> he was really, really screwed, and we were able to, to patch it up and air him up, and he was able to get back to camp uh, because we had this kit. Um, so it has, you know, the, the glues, it has the, the plugs, it has valve cores, valve stems, um, a couple little plunger style tools to help you dig the, the patch in there. Um, I think it's worth it. It's, I can't remember how much it costs. I remember thinking it was expensive, but just that one repair that we did made it worth it. This thing does rattle around like crazy though. So wrap, wrap this tool in a paper towel or something so it doesn't drive you crazy. Um, it's always a good idea to have at least one or two little lights like this, shop-style lights, where you can sort of place them wherever, 
hold them or put them underneath the truck or whatever because if you do break it's probably going to be after dark and it's going to suck to not have light same thing here just cheap little costco lights um i have a camping gear setup where i have a bunch more of these but i always keep at least one or two in the truck at all times again if you get stuck or something bad happens you need to work on your truck you're definitely going to be in the dirt it's probably going to be gross so this is a really nice kind of mechanic pad that's uh, wax canvas um really really nice stuff this is the from adventure tool company and they're a big sponsor of cruise moab and did this in concert with slee for cruise moab last year definitely one of the best cruise moab swag gifts we've given out probably ever uh over here depending on what kind of a, a pooper you are you may want a toilet this one is the highest rated on amazon everyone loves it I've probably had it for two or three years. I've never opened the box, but I bring it with me every time uh, just in case. And then obviously extra bags just in case you, you need it. So it makes some people more comfortable. And depending where you are, you may actually have to pack pack out your, your waist and can't, can't just bury it. Um, this is a random little like A or B drawer soft side case that... Uh, it's made to fit inside their drawers, but I really like it just kind of on its own because it's compact, it's it's tidy, has a zipper on it. Um, I just keep random stuff in here. Haven't even gone through here in like a year, but you know, duct tape, lighters, batteries, including batteries for your uh, your key, because if you're you know something happens with your battery and you're in the middle of nowhere, even if your key you may you may be stuck. WD forty of course, fuses. These cool night ice ties work for everything. Flashlights, you know, little circuit tester light, uh, fuel, ratchet straps. And then these are, these are those battery operated flares that are also magnetic. So you have the, the flame style and the battery one. So, so you're covered if anything ever happens and has a ton of different settings. And the thing that I really like about it is that because it has a magnet on the back, if you have a metal rear bumper, you can slap these on the back of your truck and uh, no one's going to miss you. So it's just, a, it's just nice to have little bags for certain things. It just makes packing so much faster. Uh, also recommended for any vehicle, regardless of uh, kind of where you're going or what you're doing, is a battery jumper pack. <laughs> I like a couple companies. This is the Anti-Gravity XP10. Had this for several years and it's just phenomenal it works every time really really good for backup power for you know uh, charging drones charging cell phones whatever and then this one is almost ridiculous because it's so big um it's called the gb150 it's the noco genius and uh it's amazing like you could like probably jump start a whole line of, of semis at a truck stop in the middle of winter and it would still charge your laptop for like five years um it's really really nice it was really expensive, but our, our van is a diesel, and uh, I always just kind of want to have that extra power just in case they need it, especially if it's really cold and the diesel is having trouble starting. Um, again, these should be in, in every vehicle you own. You can spend maybe 50, 60 bucks to get a, a good one, and that's really all that most people are ever going to need. Uh, air compressor. So this is a good one I've had for a few years. And I don't do the hard mounted to the vehicle uh, air compressors like the ARB dual and stuff because I trade trucks out so quickly. Uh, I never keep a vehicle for long enough for it to make sense on a payback uh, uh, relative to the money to, to do that. So this is a style that I've added the ARB inflator to. It has alligator clamps, so you stick it right in the battery. That's the only kind to buy. You stick it in the outlet, it'll blow the circuit every time. So don't buy that junk. It's not worth it. Um, and then it has a long coiled hose, which is really nice because you can uh, get some really good distance. You can do all four tires without moving the air compressor once, which is really cool. And then, uh, oh yeah, there's the, the fourth uh, tire deflator, which is cool. Um, these things are worth their weight in gold too, especially the nice ones like Ston or even TerraFlex. They make a cheap one that's good. Extra air filters, and then of course just a random multi-tool. It's always nice to have these in pouches. Then the final one, which is also critical when you're actually wheeling, uh, not necessarily just driving to work every day, is the recovery gear. So there's a few straps here. 
The biggest one, the red one on the right, is your traditional kind of a toe strap. It doesn't have a lot of elasticity, um, and it's not really good for like a dynamic recovery situation, but this is good if you're just simply giving a toe or as a winch line extension, um, a lot of good uses for it. And you, you really want a nice one here too. This is the High Lift brand. Um, fortunately, I've never had to use that particular one, which is why it's still in its, uh, its whatever, its casing. But uh, High Lift makes really good stuff. And this one's very affordable compared to, to some of them that are out there. The next one is a dynamic rope called a snatch strap. And uh, what this does is uh, it has a lot of elasticity in it. And you can, if someone's stuck in the mud or the snow, whatever, and they're really, really stuck where the, the weight of the vehicle seems like it's doubled or tripled, you can attach this to the front of a vehicle or, or whatever and uh, take off really fast and kind of get some more dynamic pulling action rather than static. And the elasticity will stretch enough to not put a shock load into the frame of the vehicle, you know, potentially damaging it. Um, so these are really nice to have in, in those kind of situations. Rock crawling or high traction situations, I would go either with a winch or a, or a static line, not an elastic line like this. Um, speaking of winching, here's a tree saver, which is a critical component that you always, always, always need to use. Uh, this basically just wraps around the tree to literally protect it so that when you're attaching your winch line, you're not you're not actually attaching it directly to the tree. You're attaching this to the tree and then attaching your shackle here. So it really reduces the strain on the tree, which is important for keeping our trails open. Um, and then I like to keep this really nice Factor 55. I think it's called the Hitch Link. It goes in the hitch, just the standard hitch pin or whatever. I have a locking one. I have a couple nice ones. I have some grade eight bolts. But you attach a shackle here, like in your, uh, your recovery hitch and uh, you can attach, you know, a snatch strap or whatever to help pull someone else out. Uh, last year at Cruise Moab, I had to tow a vehicle about probably close to, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 miles. And I had this and all this all this gear and was able to pull out, you know, an 8,000 pound truck uh, under no power at all off-road, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's important to have several of these D-rings or shackles, whatever the heck you want to call them. Um, they're really nice to have for attaching these to hard points. Um, and then also, of course, you want to have your, uh, pulley blocks or, um, uh, uh what, I mean, there's a bunch of different names, snatch blocks, whatever. Um, this is a cheap Smitty built one I bought years ago. I've never used it. Uh, I just kind of got it cause it was on sale and I thought it was a good idea to have an extra. And then I have this really nice worn that I have used, which works amazing, but it's, it's probably six, seven pounds by itself. It's absolutely massive. Um, and then if you are winching, if you, depending on how long your line is, you may need a winch line extension, which is what this is here. Uh, so that gives you the extra length on your, on your rope for a far recovery. And then when you're actually recovering, you, uh, may potentially want to use one of these. It's like a line dampener. So it's like a little jacket with some weight in it. And so when your winch line is taut, if, if it were to, to snap, it could theoretically snap back and hurt someone uh, in either direction, um, especially if it's a steel line. So in theory, this puts a little weight on it so that if the witch line snaps, everything drops to the ground instead of flying back and you know, hurting or killing someone. So um, I know there's a lot of information really quickly, but I figured this would be easier than me typing you a long email or something. So uh, hopefully this is helpful. I'll also follow this up with an email and just kind of give some more uh, tips and tricks. Um, also, one thing I didn't mention that's, of course, critical is max tracks. Uh, I actually have those on the roof of the car, otherwise they'd be in here. I suggest four for every vehicle. I know they're, they're expensive, but they are, they are definitely worth it. That's always my first line of, of attack uh, in an off-road recovery. You know, before the winch comes out, before anyone stands there and pushes or whatever, it's just always better to use the max tracks and be safe. Uh, and they're the best quality brand. I've tried the Treads, I've tried the Maxa, the cheap ones on Amazon, and, and they're, they're fine, but I definitely just trust the Max Tracks more. And, you know, when you're wheeling, especially by yourself, uh, self-recovery is something you really need to be prepared for. So anyways, I, uh, I hope that you find this helpful. Feel free to shoot me an email, shoot me a text, or uh, call me if you have any more questions. Hope you guys have a great time. Bye.